Hey guys, this is System, and this is all the Mod 6 to the sky. Hope everyone is well and an amazing day. Let's go ahead and uh, jump right back into this pretty cool pack here. So, in between episodes, I went ahead and uh, worked on a base quite a bit, just prettying things up. I went ahead, I guess, and added a whole bunch of steel blocks, broke down that little tower we had, added some glass here just to make it all pretty so we could see down below. Add this little tower of just uh, grids here, <laughs> so we can just access it on every side, which is cool. Added in some islands for the different mods, right? So I have like the dragons over there, got Batania, got Astral, then I got Mechanism. Uh, Mechanism, uh, I went ahead, you guys told me during the video, and I actually saw this during editing, that I didn't power this thing, so it's all powered up, ready to go. We have an insane amount of lithium, it actually produces lithium really fast, we're up to 66,000, which is uh, pretty cool. We also have uh, 1,500 polonium pellets, which is uh, pretty cool as well. And uh, everything's just looking good. I actually have this turned off right now because uh, we don't really need any more of that right this second. So I just figured to turn it off. Just uh, more of the steel here. And uh, what else did I do here? I just made everything pretty, man, and uh, reorganized, I guess, basically. I did AFK, I guess, for three more hours with my sword. And I got up to 18,000 now, which is actually pretty crazy. And down here, I guess, I went ahead and automated some of these here, the dissolution chambers. These things need liquids and stuff. I just got tired of making the upgrades, to be honest. The upgrades were just a pain. But you have to kind of lock in the recipe to kind of do it efficiently. I mean, you could move exact amounts of liquid, but I didn't want to bother with that. So I just set up four machines and did all the way up to the advanced machine frames. And then I'm just pumping the items into the interface, like by with uh, auto-pushing, as opposed to uh, pulling out the back or some other side. It's because all the sides were actually taken up. So that's why I did that. And uh, it's working well, working well, actually, really good. Oh, and I made some of these here. Uh, finally made the Creative Crafters, which are really laggy, actually. <laughs> they're fine when they're crafting, but when you go into the interface, you get like this little pulse of lag from everything loading in, right? So a little, 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 little laggy, just a little laggy. Anyway, that, that there. What we're going to do today is probably get into some enchanting. So I'm going to go show you two things that I made with Patania. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, get to some crazy enchants. We should be able to get to level 20 enchants today. And pretty much deal with emeralds for the rest of the pack. That's kind of the plan. So we'll see how that goes there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, this here. Let's do that. This is actually the mana enchanter from Batania. So if I just break this thing, right? It's actually like a multi-block, right? And if you don't build it right, it won't farm. So you just do that. Sweet. Going to have down this multi-block, I guess, back here. It's in uh, Natural Apparatus. This thing is called Enchanting with Mana. It is the Mana Enchanter. Basically what it does, it allows you to basically duplicate books. So I'm going to show you that. So that is really cool. This one over here is uh, the Mana Collectors. And these things are insane. They're actually from the add-on mod. Mythic uh, Botany, I think it's called, right? Yeah, Mythic Botany. And to hunt them down was really in a weird spot. They don't have their own page. They're kind of hidden back here. Mana Collectors. And these things basically make it so you do not need spreaders at all. It just You just put them under your flowers, then you, underneath them, I guess, you have a spark with a recessive uh, augment on them, and then they automatically pump into the spark network, and uh, yeah, you don't have to move around the mana. It just flies insanely fast. It's actually able to keep up the nether stars that we're actually using for mana, which is crazy because before, even with these spreaders, I tried it with the Gaias, the nether stars would actually... Uh, despawn before they actually got all the mana out of them. So these are actually able to keep up, no problem. It, it literally fills up pool. Like if I use all this, all that a pool will be done in like 20 seconds. It's actually crazy with the eight stars. So that is actually crazy and uh, really awesome. So did I do anything else? I can't think of anything else I did. So maybe we'll jump into it here and uh, yeah, just get that done. One thing I noticed too when I built this with the multi block, I only had one. I was wondering, I was getting power out of it at one point. And I didn't, I had like, I had FE uh, inputs in my inventory when I built this, and I only had one FE output. So it actually used the inputs, which makes no sense. I don't even know why this multi block would grab the inputs. But I came over here and moved things around. I moved the plug at one point because uh, I was just changing things and testing things, right? But I don't know why it grabs the inputs. So make sure you don't have any inputs because I was confused for a bit why this thing wasn't producing power, like putting it into our system. It was just, yeah, it was just really strange. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into completely overpowered enchants and uh, probably get that done. Also, I had a glass here, man. I, I really like this. It actually looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, I've just got to push forward here. So let's go ahead and actually uh, kind of break the game and uh, just make it sane a chance, right? So right now I have Fortune 7. You're probably wondering, how do you get Fortune 7, right? So not that hard, actually. Really easy. 
what you do is go ahead and uh, throw this pick on here. Also, I forgot to mention you need to have a uh, spark on top of this. I didn't have the spark there, but uh, that's what's going to make it so it can pull the mana really easy. But anyway, I throw down this book, then I just go ahead and grab a wand, then I believe I just right-clicked that. Oh, what, did I have that in the right mode? What mode is this on right now? Fine, there you go. Awesome. It's doing its thing, though. I can see it right there. It's actually getting mana. It just uh, pulls that out. There you go. We have Fortune 7, and then we have Fortune 7. I mean, it doesn't actually use up the book when it does that. And what that means for us is basically this. We just go ahead, grab the pick, sweet, apply it, get Fortune 8, go ahead and head over here. We'd want to disenchant that. <laughs> and we effectively just duplicated a enchantment, which is utterly crazy. Now throw away that pick because it actually remembers uh, kind of the combined enchantments that have been on it. And start with a fresh one. Just like nothing happened, man. That way we use a lot less mana and uh, experience, I guess, essence to be able to do it as well. And then we just repeat this process. And we can do this effectively up to level 20 really easily. Uh, you, there is a way to actually go over level 20. But you actually need to have... Uh, I guess you use the pedestal mod, and it starts taking ridiculous, like utterly ridiculous amounts of experience. But you definitely can go over. I'm just going to go to level 20 in this pack, because I really don't see much point to go past that. But now uh, you can see there, now we have 9. We'll go ahead and pop that off. And uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and do some of this myself in a couple minutes here. I'm just kind of showing you the process, because it's utterly hilarious. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of you. Sweet. Go ahead and grab this. And then just uh, pop that back up there. Get ourselves this. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do this, and then we're going to have uh, Fortune 10. <laughs> it actually doesn't take much time at all if you actually have a real good mana setup. So I have a pretty beastly mana setup now, and it's uh, utterly insane, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and grab you. Sweet. We get ourselves uh, Fortune 10. We're going to do this right here. Get our, sorry, Fortune 9. Now we have Fortune 10. Sweet. Go ahead and do this. Do that. And uh, yeah, I'll kind of show you how much mana we use too. It shouldn't even be that much because we keep resetting the levels. But, uh, let's head uh, down here for a sec. Sweet. So this entire process has used about one pool out of, I think I got 24 there, right? No, it's not 24. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21 pools, I guess is what I have. And I can fill this up super fast. So if I go ahead and grab some nether stars, right? Go ahead and do this. Sweet. It's easiest to kind of drop these in. I had this automated at one point too, to actually do the nether stars. But it was filling them up so fast that I was just wasting stars. And I just kept having to turn it off. So it's actually easier just to drop them off. But you can see the mana just starts going out really quickly. <laughs> starts filling up all these pools. And yeah, it's just going to fill them up insanely fast. So it's going to be really good, man. <laughs> Takes no time at all. Uh, probably like these one stars will probably fill up all those pools, basically. And then I'll have to do it again. But yeah, this is uh, basically how you do the chance, man. It's uh, pretty crazy. I probably am on a old pick. So let's actually get rid of that one. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to go ahead and do the rest of this by myself here in a second. So there you go. We're actually up to level 19 now, which is actually pretty rad. Let's go ahead and drop that over there. Also, I should probably make it daytime. Let's go ahead and uh, grab that puppy. There you go. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. Sweet. Got ourselves our Fortune 19 book, at which point we're going to throw this off. Then we're going to probably switch over to a diamond pickaxe because that's probably a better idea. Then I guess just uh, throw this one on here, right? So that is awesome. Then go ahead and actually grab our wand. Sweet. And then, yeah, we'll have a uh, level 20 right here, which is awesome. It's actually really rad. And I haven't had to uh, really do anything other than throw a little more stars on there just to be able to keep up with the mana. These higher level ones actually take a lot more mana. But at the same time, I, I could look and I bet our pools aren't even down that much, to be honest. I guess we'll see here. Now they're down a little bit, I guess. It is definitely using mana. I've had to feed these, I think, three sets of stars in the process. But at the same time, not that big a deal. Anyway, there we go. We got uh, level 19. We'll just go ahead and grab our pick. Go ahead and do this and that. And now we're going to have a level 20 fortune <laughs> diamond pickaxe, which is awesome. Totally awesome, right? And we can duplicate these too, right? I can just pull these off and do that. But I don't think we can make it to level 21. Let's go and test it real quick, I suppose. Let's pull this off here. There you go. Sweet. Go ahead and throw you off. I guess I shouldn't have had a diamond pick yet, but I guess it doesn't matter too much. We'll just go ahead and make one more. Sweet. Go ahead and pop you on there. Go ahead and throw our level 20 and do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we can't do this through this, so I guess we'll find out. I guess through this. This is the uh, limitation on the applicator. Let's go ahead and uh, just get that done. Cool. I wonder if we could do it on the anvil. I know you can do it through the pedestals, like I said, but I'm pretty sure it takes a massive amount of experience. I don't know if I want to get into that. So anyway, 
kind of see how it goes there. Awesome. You actually have it. So that's uh, level 20. This one's level 20. And if I put it on here, yeah, it won't do it. Okay. So let's try one other method here. If I went ahead and uh, pulled it off here, I suppose. Let's do that there, right? Then let's go grab our anvil, I suppose, and uh, see if we could actually do it that way. I bet it won't, though. <laughs> Almost positive. No, it's because it's still going to be a level 20. So it is the limitation. So we won't do that. Cool. And I guess I just have to enchant one more and then we're finished, right? But anyway, that is awesome. Really simple, really easy, and really powerful, right? And I'm going to go ahead and do this for Outlaw as well because Outlaw is completely broken enchant. And uh, you guys are going to see that because it's actually really powerful. And it'll probably be the method I use mainly to get us emeralds in this pack. But this is going to be the other method that I'm going to use alongside it. Basically, I'm going to use a auto clicker to break emerald ore for us as we get it through the void miner. Uh, I think I have enough crystals. Actually, I definitely have enough crystals to set that up now. So that'll be uh, pretty sweet. Uh, so you can bring it, pick up these books once the ritual starts too. It just checks for what was there originally. So that is good. So we got our pick. Let's go ahead and actually grab some emeralds. I forget where I put that. I moved that, right? Is it in this room? Yeah, it's in right here. Let's go ahead and grab. Uh, that's uranium. I want emerald. Let's do that. I have it focused on emerald right now, I think, as well. Uh, right there, yeah, the lime lenses. It's cool. So let's go ahead and grab some emerald and see how much we get just for one. Let's see here. We got only four. <laughs> let's try. It's going to be a little random, right? See there? There's 64. <laughs> That's crazy. How many was that? We've done six and just got 66. That's actually pretty crazy. So the RNG is going to be a little heavy. That, that, that four was probably the lower end, right? Yeah, we're going to be able to get uh, emeralds really fast. This method as well as the next method. I think the next method is actually going to be faster. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this stuff off. And then I'm going to switch to swords. Then we're going to start putting the outlaw, I guess, the one in here, onto a sword and doing it that way. And once I'm done, I'm going to go back and uh, I guess show you what that one's for. So there you go. We're actually up to Outlaw 19, which is uh, pretty awesome. We should be able to uh, finish this off here. We're going to switch over to a Diamond Sword now. So just go ahead and pop that on there. Go ahead and just use that. And it's also uh, nighttime again. So let's do that. There you go. I love that ritual so much. <laughs> it's so awesome. Come on. Are you almost done? It is almost finished there. Oh, it's so struggling for mana right now. Anyway, have to come back and throw some more stars there in a bit. But uh, there we go. It's actually finished. Sweet. It's also daytime, which is awesome. And then we should be at Outlaw 20. There you go. We have Outlaw 20. We have what we need. Let's go try it out. And what we're going to do is go use this on villagers. Now, Outlaw is a pretty cool kind of enchant, right? So if you go to Outlaw, check this out. Go to Outlaw right here. It, it doesn't really tell you much. It says increases damage dealt to villager bobs. And that's all it really says. Well, it doesn't tell you the rest. The rest of it is it makes them also drop emeralds. So... These guys are now going to drop emeralds, right? So if I actually come over here, let's see here, anything in there? I've got 23. Let's test them with uh, a level four. I guess the original one. Let's uh, come over there. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there you go. I can sit here and just AFK and get emeralds as well. So I'll be able to do this. I mean, this is really only limited by, well, my farm. I'm going to have to probably make it so they actually get pushed a little closer. Maybe using a fan or something like that. So I can just spam this a little more. But it does bonus damage to them anyway, so I'm not even too concerned about the damage or spamming, right? I guess you'd want to wait for the cooldown bar, just so you have uh, your chance of the uh, sweep attack, right? And then, yeah, just get tons of emeralds to sitting here killing villagers. Also, also this. Let's go ahead and actually turn that off. I guess pull that out. You can see there. Look at that. That is utterly insane how fast that is. And uh, yeah, we could just use this to get massive amount of emeralds. I know some of you, which are probably, you don't watch every episode, don't realize exactly why I want emeralds. The reason we need emeralds so badly and why I'm focusing on this is for this here, right? This dimension seed. We need uh, blocks of emerald times five. That's 500,000 emeralds. So between these two methods, this is going to pretty much knock that out of the ball ballpark, right? And make this super easy. We just saw we just got like what four or five hundred emeralds in a couple seconds just by just by dealing with villagers, man. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Actually, you should probably be over here. There you go. This is much better. And this is only running one spawner right now, too, right? I just want to kind of sit here and just kind of see how quickly we get it. There you go. Awesome. And then if we go up here, look at that, it's almost full again. So, yeah, really, really easy way to kind of get emeralds in the pack. 
as well as the one with the pick. Now the pick one is probably going to be set up with the, I guess, refined storage. And I'm going to have to wait until we actually have a void miner, I suppose. But once we have that, we can use, uh, what is that called there? Is it a plane with that? I forget what it's called with refined storage. No, let's go to at refined. Check that out. It'd be a plane with AE2. With this one, it is called the, this thing right here, constructor. With a constructor, we can make it place the ores over and over again. And then just sit there uh, with a machine to break it automatically, right? Like an auto clicker or something like that. So that should work out really, really well. And that'll actually handle emeralds for the entire pack without any problem whatsoever. I think we're going to be able to get uh, just pretty much infinite emeralds at this point. So it's actually totally amazing. And that's just to a chance. I don't even know what other enchants would be utterly and broken uh, inside that setup. So it is uh, pretty crazy all around. So the next thing we're going to do here is, I guess, step away from emeralds and uh, go ahead and jump into the mecha suit and just get that made and actually charge it up and all that jazz. And make it all powerful and stuff because it just sounds like fun. So we're going to do that. We'll be pretty much unkillable after this point, which is uh, pretty awesome. I did have to change our gas burning setup. So this was originally our gas burning setup. See here, it's actually, instead of voiding off the actual substrate, it's now pulling it over to this pressurized rasher chamber, getting mixed with liquid ethylene and oxygen, and then turning that into uh, HDPE. So or I guess the substrate gets, yeah, gets turned to HDPE. This is just getting pulled in that chest there. Uh, you'll have to have a rotary condensator to turn the ethylene, right, that we were producing before, straight into the liquid. So it's doing that there. Then I'm just pulling the liquid, not the liquid, the oxygen of the electrolytic separator into this machine. And it's just, it's just doing what it needs to, right? So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's working out. It's doing its thing. Our chest is getting backed up with a bunch of uh, fragments, I guess, that we weren't getting previously, as well as some of the uh, eggs from the slimes, because that's weird, too, the mob farm, too, that dreadful dirt. Every once in a while, I had to add this glass. Yeah, they keep spawning, like, through the walls. They keep doing this, so that is a thing. So I'd keep having to manually kill them. Haven't found a solution. I guess you'd have to do, like, double walls or something. But uh, definitely an issue. Either way, let's go ahead and actually see if we could actually make this. So I guess we'll need a set of diamond armor, right? So let's go ahead and uh, make that real quick. So that, that, this, and the other thing. <laughs> there you go. And there we go. And then we should be able to grab some netherite, right? Let's go ahead and grab that. Sweet. We have essence for this too, but we still have tons of these fragments. Oh, it takes more of that, doesn't it? Go ahead and grab gold. I've never had to make a set of netherite armor. This is actually going to be my first. So that's a thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can actually hunt down our thingy. This thing. There we go. Let's go ahead and do that. Sweet. And I guess uh, anyone who's played vanilla knows how to do this, except for me. Go ahead and grab you. Cool, and then cover me in debris. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and see if we make this now. I think I have everything else crafted up. You do need these uh, basic induction cells, and we're actually going to set up a induction matrix before long, just so we have some massive, I guess, power storage, which would be probably a good idea. But there you go. We have our full mecha suit now. And uh, the way of this thing, I guess we would just do this, right? So there you go. We're all good to go. It changes your UI a lot. I think you'd hit H and turn that off. If you don't want that compass down there, which I really don't. Also, a bunch of information at the top as well. You can see it's also kind of charging up at the top. It's got uh, all this information. We got ourselves a new shield bar as opposed to an armor bar. And that's what actually makes this thing so powerful. So anyway, let's kind of pull that off right now. There you go. I feel so slow right now. Anyway, let's go ahead. And, uh, we should be able to make the angel ring too. I'm going to make that as opposed to its flight because I think you need antimatter for that. But I think we just craft a elytra, right? So let's actually go do this. Sweet. This will be temporary, I guess, until we get the uh, upgrade for this. Uh, Elytra. Sweet. We got one of them. Grab ourselves a diamond ring. Sweet. Then grab ourselves one of these. Got an angel ring. And this will be much slower rate of flight, but it'll at least be um, rate of flight, right? <laughs> anyway, let's go to here. Awesome. See if we can hunt down a ring. Which ring would I pull off right now? Probably the aura. Let's pull that off. Or pop that here. I thought that was slot ring. Oh, does it have its own own uh, slot here? It almost looked like it did, didn't it? Let's see here. Necklace, is it like here? There we go, it's got its own slot. So this will be our alternative flight, right? It's much slower, very much slower. But uh, we should be able to deal with that a little bit. But now that we have this armor, we could actually upgrade it, right? So we need to go ahead and make one of these, a modification chamber. Go ahead and grab that. Grab ourselves, do we have any points in here? Hopefully, nope. Let's go ahead and grab some points here. Sweet, let's go ahead and grab one of them. 
And this is going to be the table to kind of, you know, make changes to your armor. There's a bunch of upgrades we could do. And let's go ahead and do that. Sweet. And then we have this little kind of interface that we can uh, pump an item in here and then make these different upgrades and just kind of make it better, right? So I can make like these energy ones. I can make these, uh, and it tells you how many they'll take too. So energy, each piece will take eight energy, I think. If you hold shift, it tells you what pieces it'll work on. Then locomotive, that's probably your, yeah, it's your pants. And I'll need four of those. Then I'm going to need the amplification, which is melee attacks. I just thought that would be a fun one because why not? And then vision enhancement, that's going to be night vision. I think you're going to toggle all these on and off as well. But I'm going to go ahead and probably just automate these recipes and go make this thing. <laughs> just do it that way, right? Let's go ahead and do you. Awesome. Go ahead and grab our locomotive. Go ahead and grab our attack amplification. Probably need swords too because I haven't taught it swords yet. And then that should be good there. And then we'll probably need the bases as well, right? So these things, right? There you go. I went ahead and got everything in there. And basically all you do with this modification station is go ahead and grab like your upgrade, right? Make sure it's like in there. Go ahead and grab your upgrade. Go ahead and do that. And I'll start just putting them in, right? And then I'll just kind of upgrade them all. This one is the locomotive boosting. And uh, you're going to have to change a bunch of hotkeys too to make this all work too. So once you have it in there, right? You're going to have to go to options, go to controls, go to, I guess, category, hunt down mechanism. And you can see here, every part of this actually has like a different button. So there's one for the chest, one for the feet, one for the head. So the head, I'm probably going to need a button for that one as well, actually. Can I do that? Let's do plus sign. There we go. And minus for the legs, because that is the main two I need right now. But if I turn on plus now, <laughs> that's a vision enhancement. That doesn't look very enhancing to me. Why is that so weird? That's actually really weird. What's with the green haze, man? I feel like I'm living in a horrible place. Wait a sec, what does this vision one actually do? I thought it was for brightens the surrounding environment, allowing the user to see through darkness. Install multiple for more effective night vision. You call that more effective? I call it more green. <laughs> anyway, that's funny. Maybe I'll try it with just one on the helmet. I guess we'll try that in a second. But anyway, let's turn that off for a second. Then the sprint one, right? So it has different settings, right? So I can go ahead and this is like almost normal speed down because we're slow. Then if I hit this one, the walk speed seems normal, but the sprint isn't too bad, right? So that's pretty good. Then we go up to 0.5. That's pretty fast. And that looks like the top there. This looks like normal. So you basically have uh, three different settings for that. And that one is actually pretty quick. Of course, I still need to deal with my walk speed. This just isn't acceptable at all. Also, this has been here like two episodes, I think. Let, let, let's fix that. That is probably driving a lot of people crazy as well as me. I've been really lazy every time I walk by it. <laughs> Let's turn that down right now. There you go, maybe like there. Awesome. Yeah, at least I can move, right? Okay, cool. So we have this armor now and we're pretty much unkillable. So with the stored energy, with eight energy upgrades in there, what are these? We have 1.63 GFE. It charges in our inventory because we have flux networks. And unless we run out of power, we can't die. So nothing can kill us anymore. We are, I'm sure something can kill us. Don't, don't get me wrong. But nothing normal can kill us. Dragons won't be able to do anything. Nothing like that. I mean, at this point, with this charm down here, I think we could actually go play in the void. <laughs> it's just kind of ridiculous, right? Actually, I'm kind of curious. Can I go play in the void? Can I do that? Let's jump in the void, guys. Let's see here. Um, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> something something really weird is going on. Oh, minute. Okay. We're just going to go uh, spun. Wait, spun? There we go. Awesome. Okay. No idea what happened there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in a normal dimension, we can go play in the void with that charm now. So we're effectively unkillable. And uh, don't do what I just did because uh, for some reason it went all wonky. But either way, we are looking pretty good, looking pretty awesome. For right now, I may do this <laughs> so we can actually move. Yeah, maybe. Although we fly, the flying isn't too bad, I guess. It's just really right now, my walk speed is so horrible. I really need to reset this with uh, with uh, Astral for sure. So, okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably wrap this one up here. I do have to say that this armor looks utterly, utterly amazing. And uh, also, I want to thank uh, a guy from the EDM Discord. His name was uh, Mighty Light. And uh, he helped me out with the Outlaw uh, enchantment. Because I brought it up and he went and tested it. And made sure that it was actually producing emeralds. And uh, yeah, he made sure it was actually producing really good at 20. So 
he was very helpful, and I want to thank you, Mighty Light, very much. It is uh, much appreciated. But I'm having a lot of behind the scene issues today, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Really like it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.